Stem cells are really cool. You had them when you were a tiny embryo and you've still got some now. Today we're going to look at what they do and how they could be used in medicine. Download your free study along workbook for this video and others in the cell biology topic. Just visit emmadetici.com for your free copy. We're going to start with recapping what differentiation is. We looked at this in the specialized cells video. When a cell differentiates, it means it changes by acquiring different subcellular structures like mitochondria and ribosomes. By doing this, it becomes a specialized cell. Can you name these three specialized cells below? On the left, we've got a nerve cell. In the middle are muscle cells. And on the right is a red blood cell. This unspecialized cell is a stem cell. A stem cell is an undifferentiated cell and they've got two main functions. The first we've already covered, which is differentiation to produce different cell types. And the second function is that it is capable of giving rise to many other stem cells, i.e. it can regenerate new stem cells. We're going to look at the uses of stem cells in animals and plants. Let's start with animals. Most animal stem cells will differentiate at a very early stage. This means that more stem cells can be found in an animal when it is still an embryo. We call these embryonic stem cells. An embryo forms when a fertilized egg cell divides, and this forms a hollow ball of cells. On the inside of this, we find the embryonic stem cells. The function of these is to differentiate to make all of the specialized cells in the body. But scientists have come up with another use. Embryonic stem cells can be cloned. They can then be induced to differentiate into lots of different cell types, like the ones that you see here. And these can then be used for the treatment of conditions where cells in the body aren't working properly. For example, paralysis is when nerves are damaged. The body can't make new nerve cells on its own, so using stem cells to make more could potentially cure paralysis. Similarly, type 1 diabetes is when cells from the pancreas are damaged. Replacing them with working pancreatic cells could cure this condition. There are other applications as well, like new heart cells to repair heart damage. But paralysis and diabetes are the two conditions that you need to learn for this specification. Although most animal stem cells differentiate at the early stage of development, there are some that remain into adulthood. We call these adult stem cells. One place where adult stem cells are found is in the bone marrow. These stem cells can differentiate to form many other types of cells, including blood cells. For example, they could differentiate to make white blood cells and red blood cells. Adult stem cells are more limited in their uses as they tend to only make a small number of different cell types whereas embryonic stem cells can make almost any cell in the body. Now on to plant stem cells. Plant cells can differentiate throughout their entire life as they continue to grow for their whole life. Mary stem tissue is found in the shoots and root tips of plants, and this is where you'll find the stem cells. You can see down here that a lot of mitosis is taking place, and this actually happens constantly so that the plant is continuing to grow. Because plant stem cells can differentiate into all cell types, even in adulthood, we can use them to clone plants. This has got some real advantages. The first is that using stem cells to clone plants is very quick and economic, i.e. cheaper than other methods. For example, the bananas that we eat are all cloned from a single plant. Cloning plants for commercial sale is also known as horticulture. We can also use stem cells in cloning rare plants, saving them from extinction. As you'll see in the ecology topic, extinction is an ever-growing concern in our world, so the ability to save rare plants from this is very important. A big benefit for farmers is the ability to clone crops with special features like disease resistance. And lastly, Cloning large numbers of genetically identical plants for research is really useful. As the plants are all the same, the effects of the research procedure can be tested more easily. 
Finally, we need to look at the issues surrounding stem cells. Adult stem cells have a risk of carrying viruses, which could infect the patient receiving them. And if a patient receives stem cells from an unrelated person, there's a chance that their body will reject them. They'll have to use immunosuppressant drugs to prevent this. One solution to this is therapeutic cloning. In this process, cells from the patient are used to create an embryo, which then has the same DNA as the patient. So there's absolutely no rejection risk. The embryonic stem cells could then in theory be used to treat conditions and even grow entire organs. This process is still in the research stages, but there are high hopes for the future of stem cells in medicine. Other issues of stem cells include ethical issues. Embryos cannot give consent to be used in research, so some people think it is against their human rights to use them. One counter argument is that most of the embryos used are left over from fertility treatments and would otherwise be discarded. Another issue is that it is against some people's religious beliefs, as they think we shouldn't interfere with the natural reproduction process at all. In some countries, the use of embryos in research is banned. Here in the UK, it's allowed, but there are some very strict regulations around it. Now it's time for some quick questions. Pause the video and give them a go, and then press play when you're ready to go over the answer. Number one, what are stem cells? Stem cells are undifferentiated cells that can give rise to other stem cells, and they can differentiate into many other cell types. Two, explain how stem cells could provide treatment for certain conditions, naming two of these conditions. Well, stem cells can be cloned and then induced or made to differentiate into certain other cell types. These cells could then be used to treat a patient with a condition such as paralysis or type 1 diabetes by replacing the cells in their body that aren't working properly. 3. Where are plant stem cells found? In the meristem tissue, which is in the shoots and the roots. Alright, how did you do on the questions? If you're studying combined science, well done, because that's the end of this topic. If you're studying biology only, you've got one more video to watch. Click here. Thank you again for watching and please don't forget to subscribe for loads more GCSE science help. Thanks and bye!